Today's the first day that we've not had any rain in probably almost two weeks, I guess. Maybe longer than that. It's been raining, it seems like, since Christmas. So, we got to take advantage of this decent weather because it's supposed to start raining tomorrow and work on the brush pile because it's getting way too big for my liking. I tell you what, I try to keep that thing burned until it gets that tall. You guys see how tall that is? That's pretty tall down there. I don't like it when it gets that tall. So, since the ground is pretty wet and around the burn pit is pretty much soaked, there's puddles everywhere, I think we'll be okay on a fire this size. We'll try to get that burnt today. And I also go up to the sawmill and do some cleanup and maybe split some more firewood. I don't know, I got a lot of stuff to do down there. At least it's not raining. I need to wash the tracker, but until then, I'll keep the dust blown out of it. All right, so I need my torch, my lighter, propane tank, and the most important thing, plenty of coffee. Alright guys, I've got a lot of work down here. Got a bunch of firewood to split up. That's mostly ash and some white oak. Right here we got a pretty good sized brush pile. Most of that is from the storm last week. Had two trees come down and several branches off another tree. Also got some slabs in there and some old rotted. I think that's some old maple in there that rotted. People ask all the time when I show this burn pile, what are you doing burning under power lines? Well guys, right there's the power lines. You can see they're over there and right there is the burn pile. They're a pretty good distance from them. They don't get close to it. And every time I do show the burn pile going up in smoke, people ask me about this tool. This is a torch. It will hook to a propane tank. And friends, this is really handy for starting fire. I got this at Harbor Freight several years ago, but they do sell them on Amazon now. I'll leave a link below to the one that's just like this one if you're interested in it. But if you got a farm or a small homestead or a decent amount of land and you're doing a lot of brush pile burns, that right there is extremely handy and it's cheap. I had to come over here on this other side to get it to light. That brush on the other side is just too green. Probably won't burn today. I'll be lucky if all this burns up. This is the chicken roof that flew off there two weeks ago. Mostly OSB and a bunch of twisted, busted up two by sixes. It's burning pretty good, but those big chunks in there, those logs, they're all soaking wet. It probably won't burn once this burns off the top. Getting a little hot though, I'm gonna move back. The only way I'm gonna get rid of this brush today is by throwing it on top of that, and maybe it will catch up there with it. Well, this ain't looking good. I've been gone for about five minutes. The fire has about went out. Throw some more of this OSB on here and that might stir it up a little, but I don't think we're gonna get rid of this pile today. A little too wet. Burning a little bit better, not too much though. We got some oak slabs to throw on top of it. These are pretty green also. Not looking like a good day to burn. I was hoping with it being so wet, it'd be perfect timing, but that's not the case. All right, friends, all this brush came from that Bradford pear in front of the house that fell down in the storm. And I guess it's just too green, it ain't gonna burn. We got a decent little fire right here in the middle. 
and I got a bunch of scraps over here in the log grout dump cart. We'll pull up here and add to it, and at least burn those off today. Better than nothing, I guess. At least it gets rid of it. I'm having a hard time seeing that hitch. If you guys will let me know when I get close, I would appreciate it. How's that look? Of course, you all know Law Dry is a sponsor of the channel. Really appreciate those guys. But having said that, this dump cart right here is extremely handy. If you have a sawmill, a small farm, or homestead, whatever kind of operation you got going and you're working on your land, this thing right here is very valuable. You can have a four-wheeler and pull it. You don't have to have a side-by-side. -side. It'll pull it just fine. You can pull it with your truck or a tractor. It really don't matter. But uh, I use this primarily for sawmill, uh, not sawmill, my goodness. Sawdust cleanup up at the sawmill. That's what we're gonna do next. And I'll also leave this part at the wood shop and all my off cuts off the miter saw, these little pieces of pine that I can't burn in the fireplace or the wood stove rather, I can't talk today, that's a shocker. Cause soft woods in a wood stove are not a good idea if you have plenty of hardwoods. I take all those scraps, pile them up in here and uh, it's just a good system guys. It makes life a whole lot easier. If I didn't have a fire going today, this would be a whole lot easier. I would just back up to the burn pile and crank the handle and dump all this out and drive off a whole lot faster. While that fire is still burning, let's try out a brand new tool. A Husqvarna splitting maul. I think it weighs maybe seven pounds, I can't remember. I'll put right here what it weighs once I look it up later. I got this on Amazon and uh, I've only used it one time and it works pretty good. So uh, let's split up some of this. What is this? Sycamore. Split up some sycamore and see how it does. Man, that sun's coming out now. Warming us up out here. Should have no trouble on this sycamore. So one thing about splitting firewood is you gotta pick it up so much. I did see some videos where some guys had some tires and I may try that one day, I don't know. Hello, mama. So sycamore has an interlocking grain that kind of spirals as it grows. That's why on a sawmill, you're better off uh, quarter sawing sycamore. If you flat saw it or rift saw it, it's gonna bow everywhere. Try to quarter saw it if you can. This log right here was way too small for that. That's why we're doing firewood on it. And I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'm not in good shape. Two for one. I've got a brand new splitting wedge to try out. Got this on Amazon also. It's made of aluminum. Really good reviews. It's kind of twisted right there as it goes in. See how it does. I may just put it right there in the middle.
Let's see this. Those steel wedges you buy at the hardware store that I use here all the time, they like to bounce out on you when you start driving them into your timber. That one right there went right in. And I thought it may mushroom here on the top, but so far, so good. taken care of. We're about to run out of daylight and before it gets dark I need to head up there to my truck and unload some tables that just came in yesterday. We're not done yet guys. Y'all hang in there. Not too bad. If you're wondering why I'm not bringing the tractor up here to unload these, the entrance to the shop, where was that? Something fell off of it. But the uh, entrance to the shop is really, really muddy right now, and I don't, we'll make it worse. So we'll just take these boxes off this pallet, take them down to the tractor. This right here, guys, is two workbenches that I bought for the shop from Uline, and they're solid steel. They're pretty heavy. I think they weigh about 200 pounds a piece. Maybe. I can't remember, to be honest with you. It was well over 100 pounds, though. They're pretty heavy. And uh, they came in yesterday. So... I have some nice workbenches for the shop. I need a bench to put a mortising machine on and a bench to put right beside of the molder to, to stack lumber on before it goes into the machine. And I could have built those, but, cat, if you knock over that tripod, you know what's gonna happen? Absolutely nothing. So <laughs> these cats are off on the tripods. But what was I saying? So I could have built these, but I need them, I need them now. And, uh, they're not that expensive. The freight was almost as much as the tables. This is the smaller of the two tables. This one is a two foot by three foot. sure what's in that or that I'm not looking forward to putting these together because that is always a pain but it's got to be done and it's supposed to rain tomorrow I know that's a shocker so that'd be a good project tomorrow work down in the shop work on my two doors I need to finish and build these tables and uh, yeah It'll be a good day right there. At least I'll get something done even though it's raining. I need to be up here at the sawmill. Man, I've got a lot of logs to saw. A lot to saw. 